Hey everyone, welcome to our special Wednesday edition of Tea with the Supremes. Julie here with Ebony, Savannah, and Cassandra. Hey. Hi everyone. I couldn't say hey because I was sipping my tea. What's up y'all? <laughs> so we are having a special Wednesday edition because we are in the U.S. Christmas is coming. It's a big holiday season and as holidays are coming, one, we wanted to just enjoy this holiday time, whatever it is that you celebrate, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Christmas, or other or none of the above. It is a big holiday time in the U.S., so we are hoping you are celebrating or at least enjoying your winter and hopefully some breaks that come along with traditional holidays. And as we're talking about that, we want to talk about anxiety that comes along with holidays because, unfortunately, that's very common. <laughs> especially the more interactions you have with extended family, that tends to be something that creeps up. So, so let's talk about holiday anxiety. So I got this information from the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, which I didn't even know that was a thing. So that's pretty cool. That's a, a thing, period. Um, so this is a part of their statement on holiday anxiety. So what is holiday anxiety? So the holidays are a time where a lot of families and friends often come together and celebrate with like parties and presents. And a lot of the times people think that these events are supposed to be something really happy and they are. However, sometimes this can bring up a lot of negative stuff for people, um, especially if you've lost a loved one, if you um, have cut ties with family, um, if you're in a financially difficult situation, you know, the past couple of years, like COVID wreaked havoc, havoc on a lot of um, stuff. So a lot of people couldn't sell, I couldn't celebrate the holidays with my family last year, which was very difficult. So yeah, let's talk about it. So there are some coping things, but before we get into that, for me, like one of the biggest triggers is like walking into a crowded room during the holidays, especially now with COVID, like it just like, I got to talk to all these people. Like, I don't want to mingle. I'm not good at mingling. So that's kind of like the social interaction is where my holiday anxiety stems from and like finances too, but I'm a broke grad student. So that's a given. <laughs> Um, so I'm curious, ladies, what, if you've ever had holiday anxiety, what has that looked like for you? I feel like I have it always for a number of reasons. But as you mentioned, the crowded room piece, I hadn't thought about that because traditionally I spend the holidays with family most often. However, I do remember that one of the companies I used to have would always have a big Christmas party. And I was, everyone in the company knew me and I could be in a face-to-face -face conversation with anyone at work without any level of anxiety. As soon as you put me at the Christmas party with the same exact people, I was so uncomfortable. It's like, I, I didn't even know them, which is so weird. It's like a weird, I have a weird level of social anxiety. So even though like, it was very awkward for me because at, at work, in my work environment, I was super confident and I could talk, I could literally, I could talk about non-work related things with pretty much anyone if I was at work. But as soon as you take me out of work and put me at the party, it was like I had, I couldn't start a conversation. I either couldn't continue a conversation. It was so weird. But that, I, that, reminded me I don't do that anymore I got invited to an ugly sweater party this year that I made the decision not to go sorry if any of our listeners um invited me and didn't I didn't attend but um I get weird anxiety it's like I just I'm cool hanging out with you in like a less heavily social space I guess it's outside of my comfort zone so interacting with my fellow supremes I've learned a lot about anxiety because it's not something that's a conversation in my circles. However, it should be because that need to be superwoman complex is anxiety laced all throughout it. So, but I've learned about that social anxiety because it's not something 
I personally experience. I like thrive in those kind of environments. Um, but learning about SAD, that seasonal affective disorder, affective, affective disorder, the anxiousness or depression around the, the holidays and you know the seasons as the change, like all of those things, now that I think about them in the context that suicide rates are higher during the holiday seasons, any holiday season. And then when you start, and you're like, well, why would that be? But when you start to put it together, people that are lonely, because I don't want to say alone, because you don't have to be lonely to be alone, but you don't have someone to celebrate it with. You don't have, excuse me, you see all the lovey-dovey people and family. Maybe you lost a child and you don't have children or you have a strained relationship. Like all of these things, those are the sides of the holidays that nobody thinks about. You know, um, when some of our special needs students went home at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot of the conversations with special education teachers were those social interactions. Sometimes in some situations in that public environment, if they are self-contained uh, in a classroom the entire time with their teacher, with that student, there are different levels of social, um, special education. But, you know, those environments are usually, usually very nurturing, you know, we're talking status quo. And when they, not all the time, but when they go home, it may not be the same type of environment. So uh, there was great emphasis put on students in those social settings that they had those being removed and taken away. And, you know, statistics and um, things have spiked domestic violence and the the need for therapists and counselors like it has been overwhelming as we transition to a and I can't even say a post-COVID world but however the aftermath new variants new strings all those a new of way of life right new way of life so I think when we talk about the holidays we have to talk about those things to be wary of those triggers and and prepare yourself may not be the right word, but to prepare yourself for those interactions or to say, no, I'm not going to go and prepare yourself, whatever way you need to prepare yourself, you have to be vigilant to prepare yourself for whatever works best for you and your well-being. And those of us who may thrive in those kind of atmospheres, environments, you also have to be cognizant and give grace to those who do not and not expect your reactions or how you feel in that environment to be everyone else's feelings and to check on them, reach out and say, hey, are you okay? You know, whatever. There is a responsibility for everyone in this process of holiday anxiety. You know, be mindful. I do want to make one caveat um, to what you said, and it's just suicide rates, because that's one of my biggest advocacy points. They do spike during the holidays. They are most prevalent in the spring and summer, uh, but they do spike during the holidays. And it is for that piece for a number of reasons, especially for kids, because their they're social element, not just the special education, but anyone in a negative um, home experience. They're not interacting with kids. If you're in college, you usually have like a month off. It's not us, but, <laughs> but many people have like a month off during, during this time. Um, my kids from school have like 13 days in a row off. So you're home for it a significant amount of time. So if you're not in the ideal home environment for whatever that means, even if it's not neglectful or hurtful, but maybe you thrive in your school environment, if you're separated from that, that will definitely increase your anxiety for sure. To another piece of anxiety, holidays are stressful. So like I said, not, I spend most of my holidays with my family. I love my family very much. We all have a lot going on you know, COVID hit us hard. We didn't get together last year. Differences of opinion. So that was, as Ebony spoke to, we made the decision to not um, participate in holiday events. And that wasn't taken 
well. Um, and that added to holiday anxiety, even though we weren't there. And then when you get together, you know, we have a number of kids, kids are stressful, and then you're all in one place. And then it's who do we buy gifts for? How, you know, how do we navigate that? What, it, there's just so much who brings food? What, it's just where does everyone sleep? What is the situation? So there's just a lot of unnecessary anxiety, but I think it's normal. Even if you are social, I feel like it is normal to have some level of holiday anxiety. What do you guys think? So just some statistics. Um, the American Psychological Association found that in 2006, women, 44% of women are more likely than men to report increased stress during the holidays mainly due to lack of time, lack of money, and pressure to get and give gifts for everyone. Um, men were at 31% increased stress. So sorry, guys, we're genetically predispositioned to stress. I find that interesting. And I don't think it's, pre- I don't think it's genetic. I think it's the societal expectations that the women are the one that buy the gifts. Like, I mean, I'm curious what you guys think, but I will say for me, even for my husband's family, 99% of the time, I'm the one that buys all the mm-hmm. gifts and my husband knows what they are when somebody opens them. Like, I because if I don't do it, it won't get sexist. done. I think that's yeah. so sad. I think the statistics are... See these gender roles? See how the gender roles cross over in the society? Like, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jules, but that's so sexist. Like, those are the issues. Mm-hmm. Those ain't my issues. See, I am I have made a state, a place of enlightenment. I ain't buying you no gift. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I do not subscribe. Well, I mean, I celebrate Christmas in a different manner. I do not subscribe to going into debt to buy you something. Like, I'm not doing that. If I'm going into debt, I got my own debt. I'm going in because I'm going on vacation. And most times at that time of the year, I'm getting ready to dip out and go on vacation. I'm going to go somewhere. I shut down from the world. So maybe that's my avoidance of anxiety. Like, that's not, yeah, that ain't my, mm -mm, nope. That's so crazy because my mom, we were talking about like presents and stuff. And she's like, this is your wedding year. Like you don't have to get us gifts. Like you're not, ex- you, like, you don't need to get us gifts. If I didn't show up to Christmas morning with any gifts, all hell would break loose. See, we only do, well, it depends. We use, we make an agreement on whatever it's going to be, whether it's going to be, we're going to buy one for a certain couple or now we all have little. So we just agree to shop for the little I agree with Ebony I absolutely would not go into debt for Christmas do I go overboard yes I have a problem because my mindset like I get so excited with like buying the perfect thing I think that's where my stress factors I'm like what will they look like I don't want to give them some BS gift that they're not like I want something that they're gonna love or it's like I bought all the girl there's a, I have a lot of nieces so they all got some level of female empowerment something either a coloring book or a book or something to tell them how great they are even I, I was about to say even though which that speaks to tradition even though they're female that they're still awesome so like that was really important to me and like I go overboard. But my stress is like, I just want to get them everything that will make them happy and blah, 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 blah. It's not, it's not a financial thing, although I, I do go overboard and I sh- don't need to and I shouldn't because that money could be better utilized. <laughs> my goal but. is to get one family member a year to cry from the gift I get them. See, that's why I like that's it's a, the, that's it's a the lovely, sentiment piece. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a lovely goal. Yeah, no, I did go in it. Look, I was that person. And there are some, some things that I like, and my family is no exception to that level of, let's say, excellence, if you will. Um, my son's birthday is, is two weeks before Christmas. And let's be honest, he was a spoiled brat. Let's not lie about that in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Jules, you said before, like you would choose and you would tell your son, uh, hey, do you want this? Are we going on vacation? What do you want to do? Those are the conversations we had like at that as we grew because I was that person I um you know I brought everything and had everything and name brands and and designer labels and and then I was like but why though 
Like I had to quit. But why though? Are you appreciative of me being in the room? Because I tell you in a minute, let me put a bow on me because my presence is the gift that keeps on giving. And it's, I, I mean that wholeheartedly. I mean it all wholeheartedly. So are you accepting of me and are you appreciative of me or are you appreciative of what I do for you? And differentiating between the two was the best enlightenment <laughs> that, that could be given to an individual because my credit card debt was absolutely ridiculous for things of that nature. And then the expectation became, this is the type and the level of gift because it was a long time before I had a child. My friends had children. Um, I was godparent. I have one, two, three, four godchildren and each of them are spoiled rotten. Let me just tell you, but that comes from me, not their parents. And they'll tell you, my godson is good. And will tell you, um, he's in kindergarten now. And he knew at the age of two and a half, like he was barely walking, maybe three. And he knew, oh, God, mommy here. He got, got my, got mommy. He has his shoes. He don't have no clothes on. He got his shoes ready. Go, God, mommy, go. <laughs> Look, I have ruined them. Let's do better. So I, I had to transition my thinking. And okay, so what can I do? I'm a teacher at heart. So I find educational things. I find spiritual things that I can give you um, that you can make use of. I'm not buying you a PS5. I'm not buying you. Like, that's ridiculous to me. My son, I think the best I did was the Xbox 360. PlayStation 2, maybe. PlayStation, did I even go to the PlayStation 3 or something? Did they have one? You know, it never made it past that. Like, he was playing Guitar Hero. I probably still had that Guitar Hero somewhere and that PlayStation somewhere in the thing. For what? Like, I'm giving you something else that's not going to be beneficial. I, I, if I can leave any message with any virtual supreme that's listening, do not break yourself trying to please another individual. We've talked about boundaries on this show. And the best thing I can say, I can't speak to your anxiety. I can't speak to how you feel. This is not my professional advice because I don't give advice. I'm just going to tell you. What I would say and what I would do is that whatever boundary you set that's comfortable for you, bump everybody else. And you find that space where you're comfortable and you work in that space of comfortability. And as you grow and you stretch and that space will grow and that space will stretch, it may change. But if this is above your capacity, be like Jules, hey, I, I can't make it. I don't make excuse for it. I don't want to be rude to you, but... Listen, that's not what I want to do. And I mean it in the most, the kindest and most genuine way possible. It's not to be arrogant. It is, I understand my capacity. Someone we really admire professionally. I heard them say that. And I, that is sometimes you lock on and latch on to things. It is the best way to explain it. I don't have to defend my capacity. I don't have to explain my capacity. But when you reach it, is not your decision being the external factor to determine what it is. But when you reach it, you've reached it and you don't have any explanation to give to another individual. That's between you. For me, it's between me and Jesus. But for you, however you believe, whatever way you walk, that's between you, yourself, and you. So for whatever way you're going through and how you're going through this season, and how you're walking through it. Find your boundaries, stay with those boundaries. And when you get to your capacity, you're at your capacity. I can really not speak to what you're saying, but it definitely hits home, Ebony, because like my anxiety comes from who we're going to spend the holidays with is because my parents are not together. They haven't been together since I can remember. They can't even be in the same room together without ruining everybody else's experiences there so every year I have to make the decision like whoever I choose to involve we always celebrate it with my fiance's family so that's not the issue is like is it our family or is it is it my family is it your family it's is it my mom's family or is it my dad's family that we're going to involve this year and it's always a struggle because it's like internally I'm thinking okay who who do I get to offend this year like 
who who gets to miss Christmas with their grandkids this year it's never like let's all get together and be neutral for the grandkids no like that's not even an option so the anxiety comes from who am I gonna let down who do I have to miss out being with on Christmas like that's setting those boundaries I guess and kind of saying like do what's best for me it's just hard in that situation I just want to reflect on your word choice because you said who am I gonna let down in that resonates with me because you can't control how someone else feels when you set a boundary or do something you know that's best for your circle but it does it carries a lot of weight and and negativity because people are going to project whatever it is that they're feeling on you and try to make it into something that you did because they feel a certain type of way and that that's hard that does add to a lot of anxiety we recently had a conversation with my mom. My mom is very set on the holiday. If you celebrate a holiday, she wants it to be on the day. I have siblings. We all have kids. We all have other families. We all have to travel, but it's very hard for her to reconcile with you spending the actual day anywhere but with her because she's the mom and she feels like that's her right. Um, And she gets very upset if she doesn't get the holiday. And it's really difficult because you feel for her, but also you feel for the reality of the situation is like, that's just not the reality. There's other families. And just because you don't have the actual day doesn't mean that you can't celebrate together. So it does add a level of anxiety because for us, like I feel anxiety when I get, I feel like I'm being guilted because of that. But I also feel anxiety because I feel for her because I know how important it is. So then it's like, you're just dealing with carrying your own emotions on top of everyone else's emotions. And that's a lot for the holiday. And a situation that you really can't, I mean, the even best case scenario that you don't have any control over pleasing everybody. That's a good point. You can't, you can't always please everybody. So the ADAA put together some holiday coping tips. So identify the thoughts and actions that are making you anxious, set reasonable expectations and small goals, not only for yourself, but for those around you that goes back to boundaries, focus on what will make you happy. And that's just kind of being selfish at that time. Don't rely on avoidance or alcohol to cope. Okay, wait, Cass, may I interject for just a moment? Mm -hmm. That selfish word choice it has such a negative connotation to it. I know. However, there's nothing wrong with if we flip it and say self-care because that's what it means. There's nothing wrong with taking care of yourself. We we have been conditioned to believe that taking care of ourselves is a bad thing and that it's negative and that should be the last thing. And I want to I want to change that. You know, it's a drop in the bucket of what that change should be. But listen, it's not selfish. It is self-preservation. If you don't do it, is not is not selfish. It should be a requirement, and we have to learn to make that requirement of ourselves because you cannot pour from an empty vessel. And if you're empty, you can't give anything to anyone else if they are. So please continue. Well, that leads into the next point of take care of yourself physically. Um, so mind your sleep, eating and exercise habits if you do exercise. I think the holidays are a really big time. Like for me, I'm a really bad binge eater sometimes in stressful situations. So um, it's really easy when I'm feeling overwhelmed by family members to just eat and eat and eat so I don't have to talk to people, (laughs) which I love food, but at the same time, that's also detrimental to my well-being because then like you're tired and lethargic and you really don't want to be around people um, when you do that. So all goes back to mindfulness. I'm telling you guys, mindfulness is the key. You're right. I recognize one of the points that you said about sleeping well and stuff and setting boundaries. So we've recently within the last year um, made the decision anytime we visit our family. So we have to travel. So we have to stay somewhere and we used to stay at the home of whoever we were visiting and it was fine but now there's so many kids it's just inconvenient um we can't rest well 
it's we can't have like take a breath and have our own space so now we exclusively stay at a hotel and that's fine we sleep well it's not necessarily received well it's going to be but it's a boundary that we set and that's just the way it is and my family has accepted it they don't like it and I understand like when you visit you know they want to host and all that but it's just not realistic you know when we're vacationing or or trying to relax we want a good night's sleep I don't want to share a bed with my kids I don't want to you know be waking up to someone else's kids it's just not something I want to sell preservation yeah. is nothing wrong with that if that's what works for you like you don't have to explain it like I can't say that that's your family you have to adjust whatever way oh, you we just have to explain but I'm but. saying you <laughs> see yeah. that that's the difference of you and I when I make a decision for me and it sounds I guess back to the word selfish it sounds but this is my view of holiday anxiety my family is a 100% in your face together. Like my mom is the matriarch. And because if you've never lost a parent, um, it's a different relationship with the living parent. And we cater to my mom and her desires. We do. We give in, we travel. Okay, well, where do y'all want to go? What do you, da, 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 da. We do that. As a family, we take family vacations yearly. And then we take a siblings vacation with our mom every third year, every other year. You do not bring spouses. You do not bring children. I think I was the only one sometimes because I was a single parent to bring my son, but he is really my mother's sixth child. Let's just be honest. Let's be realistic here. Um, that's what happens when you're a single parent and you're the only girl that has a... So other than that, like we have those discussions, but we don't, we don't share the... What? Do now we can with our mom if it's just the siblings, you know. But all all of my siblings, we can't, you know. Like we'll go get a suite and everybody stay together. Cool, that's one thing. But no, no, you stay at yours, I stay at mine. You be comfortable with yours, and I be comfortable with mine because at this phase of my life, I don't. I play with the little kids, but I send the little kids home because that's not my, that's not my life. So you shouldn't have to explain that. And that is self-preservation. You want to get through the holidays and enjoy them. It doesn't, it shouldn't be something that you have to get through and do. You want to be able to enjoy it. So whatever way you can enjoy it, and it means staying at the hotel, do you and stay at the hotel. That's your pocket. You and your husband. Listen, right? <laughs> do you. Do yeah, you. No, it has worked out really well. And they have even seen the reality of, I think the first time we did it, it was a huge ordeal it created a lot of conversation and then that night most of the babies um were, didn't sleep and then it was like oh it's a good thing you guys weren't here last night and I was like yeah see I that's what I <laughs> that's why we weren't here last night so yeah it's just one of those things you have to set boundaries that are right for you and whatever works whatever makes the most sense absolutely and my husband's family is totally different like they, we spend holidays with them and they're very flexible with the holidays. My in-laws, uh, they go to Santo Domingo every Christmas when we can go be there with them. It's awesome. Cause you know, we like to travel around Christmas and it is hot there. And that is my kind of weather. And it is very, it's just awesome. We couldn't go this year. We didn't have passports and stuff in time, although we probably could have, um, cause we have them now, but it's different, different relationships. You got to manage different relationships around the holidays. And I think that's part of it too. I'm going to pull a Dr. Nina. Are there any final thoughts on holiday anxiety? One phrase or one word <laughs> that you could, that you can give to our virtual listeners. Do like you. <laughs> that's it. Do you. Go ahead. I want to throw in the self-care aspect of say no. Yeah, I just think it's manageable. How about you, Cass? Be mindful of how you're thinking. However, enjoy yourself. Have a glass of bubbly for all of us and enjoy yourself. I will say I bring I bring a lot of wine. <laughs> Rose all day. It's not for everyone. If that's not your thing, I'm not advocating for it. I'm just saying it works for me and I enjoy it. I like, I don't drink very often, but I like a good glass of Moscato and a oversized wine glass and that comes out in the holidays <laughs> so 
Listen, there's no drinking at the pastor's house. <laughs> let's be let's be clear, but we have fun together. So my quote as I leave you with this and, and you, we've joked, but you have to do what's best for your mental health. Do what you can with what you got, where you are from the great Theodore Roosevelt. Shout out Roosevelt. That's where I went to school. What, what? Uh, do we have additional mindfulness? I know you already pointed to many mindful pieces. No, I just think the most important thing is to remember that self-care and mindfulness isn't selfish and knowing how you feel and expressing how you feel isn't, it is selfish, but in a good way. And don't be afraid to say, no, I cannot. What about you, Savannah? Any additional self-care? That was my self-care thing was saying no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking it, Kat. Just kidding. Um, hey, it's a collaboration. <laughs> Reinforced. <laughs> no, like don't stretch yourself too thin. Don't try to put more of yourself out there than you can handle. We're all expected to do so many extras during the holidays. So saying no is a self-care practice. I think you all should incorporate. Absolutely. So with that, everyone, whatever it is that you're celebrating, a happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, joyous Kwanzaa, happy holidays. If you don't celebrate, I hope you get a day off and you can just relax and have gratitude because we're finishing up a, another tough year and it's a time to just relax. So we hope that you get some relaxation this week and enjoy some some quality time with the people that you care about. So happy with, holidays, everyone. Yes. Bye, everybody. We'll see you. Enjoy this Kwanzaa and enjoy you. You, you, you. Enjoy you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.